Have you been wanting to improve at ranked? Are you looking for operators that can give you an edge over your opponents? Well, you've come to the right place because if you start playing the operators I mentioned in this video, I guarantee you, you'll start winning more rounds. So here is my list of the eight best defenders in year nine of Rainbow Six Siege. I hope you all enjoy it. Coming in in our eighth spot, we have Smoke. Smoke barely managed to edge it out on this list, and it's for one reason, his amazing gadget. Smoke's gadget is his toxic smoke grenades that allows him to smoke off an area for a short period of time and deal damage to any attackers that walk into the smoke. This is an extremely useful gadget for a couple of reasons. One, it is a great tool for denying the plant, and secondly, it is a great tool for denying the attacker's aggression. Smoke can play behind a deployable shield or on a power position, and when the attackers start pressuring him extremely hard, he can use his smoke grenades to either fall back or just to force the attackers to wait a little bit before they can push him. This causes the attackers to lose a lot of pressure that they had on Smoke because they now have to fall back and wait for a smoke grenade to burn out. This combined with Smoke having the M590 SMG11 combo, one of the best combos in the game, makes him a demon for playing behind a deployable shield or any sort of power position. Now, this does give him the downside of struggling at longer distances in gunfights because the SMG-11 isn't the best gun for longer distance gunfights. But in Siege, since most gunfights happen in close range, having an SMG-11 and a shotgun, it makes it very hard for the attackers to deal with you, especially if you play it right. Also, Smoke having access to barbed wire, an extremely useful and somewhat rare secondary gadget nowadays, helps him in this ranking as well. The only thing holding Smoke back from being a little bit higher is the fact that he did recently lose his deployable shield. If he still had the deployable shield, he'd probably be in the top five, to be honest. Boom has Smoke, we have Valkyrie in the seventh position. Valkyrie, just like Smoke, is mainly on this list simply for her gadget. Valk brings three of her black eye cameras to the defending team. The reason why these cameras are so strong is because they provide a ton of intel to your team. And intel in Rainbow Six Siege is extremely important, especially for the defense. They can allow your team to pick up free nitro kills, which Valkyrie also has a nitro cell, which makes her pretty strong for this. And they can help you late round to figure out where the attackers are planting. All of this combines to make Valkyrie a very obvious choice on this list. She even has a deagle to help her make footholes or headholes for her team during the prep phase. The only thing really holding her back on this list is the fact that her MPX isn't the best. It doesn't deal a lot of damage and his DPS is kind of low, but it does have low recoil, allowing you to hit easy headshots. Now moving past Valkyrie, we have Wamai, and Wamai is one of the most well-rounded operators in this game, in my opinion. Wamai comes equipped with his magnets, which allow him to deny any sort of attacker projectiles. This includes Gone Sixes, Flashbangs, Smoke Grenades, frag grenades, pretty much any projectile you can think of, Wamai will counter. This, similar to Smoke, allows Wamai to play behind a power position extremely well. Putting him behind a deployable shield or something and having him throw his magnets to protect the shield throughout the round can be a really strong strategy. Then him having access to the MP5K with an ACOG also helps him on this ranking because it's an extremely strong and fun weapon to use. Then on top of that, he has impacts and prox alarms, which are a very solid secondary gadgets. Literally, Wamai is just a better Jaeger in the current meta right now, and that's why I'm putting him on this list in the sixth position. Moving past Wamai, we have Mute in the fifth position. Mute almost made it higher on this list, but the only thing that's holding him back is that the rest of these operators on this list are pretty overpowered and I feel like need nerfs. So I do think Mute belongs in the fifth position. Now, Mute finds himself here for a couple of main reasons. The first reason is because his gadget is the best gadget in the game for dealing with drones, and droning on the attacking team is vital. So bringing an operator that can help you deal with that droning that the attackers so desperately need is extremely strong. Mute has access to four of his signal disruptors, which can disable pretty much any gadget in the game, allowing him to work as a breach denial operator and also as a drone denial operator. However, due to the small radius of his signal jammers, you can't really get away with using him as a breach denial operator very effectively. So your main use cases for him are going to be as a drone denial operator. Now, if you start playing mute, you'll notice that he has the exact same weapon combo as Smoke, the M590 and the SMG-11. Like I said with Smoke, this is an extremely devastating loadout because it allows mute to be a dominating force in the close range and it forces the attackers to have to be mindful of where mute is playing. This combined with the fact that mute has a nitro cell makes him one of the most versatile operators in the game and you can pretty much run him on every bomb site and get a lot of utility. For that reason, Mute is going to be going in the fifth position on this list, and I think he wholeheartedly deserves it. Moving past Mute in the fifth position, we have Fenrir in the fourth position, and I struggled finding a position for Fenrir. Fenrir has one of the strongest gadgets in the game. However, the gadget skill ceiling is pretty high. If you don't know, Fenrir's gadget is the f knot These are traps that can be thrown above a doorway or on a surface, and when the attackers walk into the trap's radius, they will be blinded by purple smoke. He has five of these traps, but only three of them can be active at a time, meaning that Fenrir has 
has to constantly stay on top of his traps and switch activation codes across his traps to make for sure that he has traps active in the areas that the attackers are pushing. This means that Fenrir needs to be constantly aware of the intel that his team is providing him and then act off that intel. This is why Fenrir can be somewhat difficult to use in solo queue because if you don't have any idea where the attackers are coming from, then getting a lot of utility out of your f knots can be somewhat difficult. However, the effect of Fenrir's f knots alone are enough to put him high on this list. Being able to blind an attacker for a significant period of time while they're in the radius of the trap is insanely strong and it allows you to pick up a lot of free frags that you otherwise wouldn't have and it forces the attackers to slow down and actually deal with your traps this combined with the fact that Fenrir has a bailiff as a secondary option allowing him to help set up the bomb site and he has an mp7 one of the strongest smgs in the game makes him have an amazingly rounded kit for any situation in siege now moon past Fenrir, we're finally in the top three and the operator that finds themselves in third place is Azami. Azami, even after the nerf, is an extremely strong operator for a lot of obvious reasons. The first of which is because her Kibas allow you to cut off lines of sight from the attackers, they allow you to set up power positions to play off of, and they allow you to waste a lot of utility from the attacking team. Azami against a non-coordinated team is an absolute powerhouse because she can set up Kibas for herself to protect the power position, and she's gonna be able to waste a ton of time from the attackers by forcing them to use frag grenades, gone sixes, Zofia charges, Ash charges, and a ton of other stuff to be able to even get rid of all of the Kibas she's placed down. This combined with the fact that she has the ACS-12 with an ACOG and the VSN SMG, two of the strongest weapons in the game on attack. I'm not even lying, the ACS-12 with an ACOG as an actual demon makes Azami have an amazing loadout for the defense because she can use her ACS-12 to set up rotations. She can use her Deagle to make footholes or head holes if needed. And she can use her Kibas to protect the power position and waste attack utility. Then she also has barbed wire, which I've discussed throughout this video as being a really strong secondary gadget. So she just has one of the most well-rounded kits in the game on top of having one of the strongest gadgets in the game. The nerf did affect her because now her Kibas can be countered with bullets, but because it requires so much HP to be able to break one singular Kiba, she's still a very strong operator and a difficult one to deal with. Moving past Azami, we have Solace in the second place, and she's here for the obvious reasons. She provides her team with a ton of utility just simply by existing. Solace is basically just IQ on the defense, meaning that when she turns on her gadgets, you can see anything electronic that the attackers place down across the map, basically. This allows Solace to see attackers on their drones. She can see any sort of ace charges or thermite charges being placed on a wall. She can see the plant going down and she can see many, many more gadgets. This allows Solace to be an intel gathering powerhouse. And as I've said multiple times throughout this video, intel in siege is key, especially for the defense. This combined with the fact that she has impact grenades allowing her to basically play below like pulse and deny a plant, and that she has the P90 and the SMG-11 in her kit, makes her an extremely strong roamer in the game. And it forces the attackers to spend a lot of time dealing with her because she can see all of their drones and where they're droning her from. So she can never really be caught off guard on a roam. So trust me, if you start picking Solace in your games as your primary roamer, you will start winning more games. Moving past Solace, the last operator and the operator in first place is going to be Legion. This may be a controversial opinion, but to me, Legion is wholeheartedly the best operator in the game and it's not even close. Legion has a ton of his goo mines, which allows him to chip away at the attacker's HP and also gather a ton of intel. He has the super shorty shotgun as a secondary option to set up the bomb site. He has the T5 SMG, one of the best SMGs in the game as his primary weapon. And he has the choice between impacts and a bulletproof camera as his secondary gadgets, which are two really strong secondary gadgets right now as well. His traps combined with his amazing kit makes him an absolute demon in solo queue because you can get a ton of utility off of your traps. And you don't really have to rely as much on callouts from your team, which in solo queue is an extremely big deal. I think considering that Legion has probably the best and most well-rounded kit in the game, I think he has to go in the first place position here. Anyways, that wraps up today's video. Let me know if you agree or disagree with this list in the comments down below. I'd love to hear your opinion. If you enjoyed today's video, I make Siege content just like this twice a week. So go subscribe to the channel and follow me on Twitter if you don't wanna miss the next upload. Also, I started a second channel where I upload non-Siege content. So if that's something you're interested in, I'll leave a link in the description so you can go check it out. If you wanna watch another video just like this one, a will be popping up on your screen right now that I'm sure you'll enjoy. Also, if you wanna watch a video from my second channel I mentioned, a video from that channel will be popping up on your screen right now as well. I'll see you next time, friends, and peace.